Righto, Taliota champs, and today we're going to find out about the Surface Book 3. When it's likely to come out, what specs does it have? Should you buy the old one now? Should you wait for the new one? So I guess we know the specs, so there's quite a lot we know, and we're just going to talk about what we don't know and what we expect to come out with this Surface Book 3. And by the way, I've already done this video before, but my Mac, yes, it's playing up with that T2 chip again, and I had an audio drop out, my interface dropped out, and now I'm going to have to record this again. Now I'm going to have to install OBS and maybe use the XPS 15s. Something friggin' reliable. Anyway, that's a story for another time. Now with this Surface Book, the current generation they have now comes so close to being my daily driver. The only reason it didn't become my daily driver is because then the XPS 15 came out and it had like a 6 core 45 watt part. And all day you could get the GTX 1060 with the Surface Book 2, the 15 inch version. I just wanted that extra horsepower on the CPU, the extra cores, and that really made a difference. The jump from four to six cores made a big difference. I tell you now, it was so close because it's so beautiful, so well engineered. It really is a piece of craftsmanship of the highest order and yes it was innovative and new and stuff like that but it's been out for a while now so it's ready to be refreshed so first of all let's just get into the specs straight away woof these are the specs okay so on the left hand side we have the 13 inch on the right hand side we have the 15 inch now i'll leave a link in the description to the tweet from at Rome game or something like that he's the one that sort of discovered this but it makes perfect sense. If you think that the current 13 inch uses, you know, eighth generation 15 watt U parts, yes, it can fit an Ice Lake CPU in, no problems, and it uses a GTX 1050. So the modern equivalent of that is the 1650 Max Q. Now, what's strange is the 15 inch on the right actually had a 1060 in it, and it had problems like keeping up because it was only a 105 watt package and it just could not power the, the GPU and the CPU together and it used to drain battery. And yeah, what they had to do is throttle it basically, throttle it. The 105 watt package was not enough to handle the components. Sound familiar, Apple? Now, if you have a look at the CPU, it's got itself obviously it's going to have the i5 but it does have the ice lake cpu so the temp generation ice lake it's not using comet lake and how you can tell the difference is g is ice lake u is comet lake comet lake can have six cores and it's 14 nanometer ice lake which this is is 10 nanometer and it's up to four cores now you might think why not go comet lake you can get six cores well ice lake has better graphics much better graphics in actual fact you could probably get a Surface Book 3 because they're friggin' expensive. I'll get into that in a sec. But you could probably get a base model without the graphics because the graphics are quite good on Ice Lake CPUs. Also, you have Wi-Fi 6 built in. You also have Thunderbolt 3 built in. Now, they're both using the same CPU, but you've got to look closely here. TDP is 15 watts. The 13-inch will be using the 15-watt configuration of this Ice Lake CPU. The 15 inch they will juice it up it can be configured up to 25 watts so the 15 inch will go harder it'll be configured to that 25 watts and if we just have a look at a patent microsoft have here it's something to do with cooling or something like that and maybe they needed this because maybe they're going to increase the 105 watt limit maybe get it up to 130 watts or something like that maybe they need the extra cooling and one thing to know about microsoft is they don't get a lot of credit for this but their cooling is amazing Amazing and how quiet their laptops are are amazing if you get the latest surface pro the i5 model with the ice lake cpus it is passively cool there's no fan no noise and you still get performance just the same as every other ultrabook and it's totally silent even the surface laptop is very quiet and you got like say something like a macbook air and it uses like a core y processor like an 8 watt processor and it has a fan so Microsoft do very well on cooling. Their machines are very quiet and I don't expect this to be any different. Hopefully they go up from the 105 watt. Now, will it have Thunderbolt 3? For me, it has to have it. I mean, you look at the specs of the current one and you see there is no Thunderbolt 3, right? I have no idea why you wouldn't put it in. The Surface Pro and the Surface Laptop they didn't put it in the latest models and they are using Ice Lake CPUs and Ice Lake CPUs have Thunderbolt built in and they didn't have Wi-Fi 6 on the AMD model either. It's going to be a much better product if you have Thunderbolt 3. It's not just for eGPUs. And by the way, if you have an eGPU with an Ice Lake CPU, it'll be, it'll be the fastest rendering machine in hardware encoding. It'll be the desktop 
or even the best laptops in hardware and coding if you have an eGPU. I've done that test. That is not a joke. So I hope it has Thunderbolt 3. What you also get with Ice Lake is you can put Thunderbolt 3 on either side. So both sides. Hopefully they do keep that sort of, you know, the Microsoft connector, the power connector that has the magnet. Hopefully they keep that, but they do include Thunderbolt 3 with power delivery. And hopefully they have two, one either side. Now most PCs only have Thunderbolts on one side because they only have one Thunderbolt 3 controller. You don't need a Thunderbolt 3 controller with Ice Lake, so you can put them where you want. The MacBook Pros have two, that's why you have Thunderbolt 3 on both sides. And the MacBook Pro suffers because of that. You plug something into the Thunderbolt and use like displays and that and you lose power. And MacBook Pros are burning out because they've got too many Thunderbolt 3 devices connected to it and they can't handle the heat. So please have Thunderbolt 3 in these. Now it's got to have a new display, has to have a new display. You get the 3x2 display, it should be a killer display. Will it be a high refresh? I don't care. I just want a high quality, wide color gamut. 60 hertz is fine for me. I mean, the artist would appreciate if it was 120 hertz with the pen, you'll, you'll get less lag and so forth. I'll just use it mostly as a laptop. So I just want the highest quality display and I want a 500 nits and hopefully HDR and those things have amazing battery surface books like the best battery life in its class it like beats everything because you've got battery in the base and you've got battery behind the display as well. They're also supposed to be fixing the hinge. It's going to have a better hinge mechanism. Maybe it doesn't have that sort of gap in the hinge anymore and you think that if it has Ice Lake CPUs going in, by the end of the year, it should be able to put Tiger Lake CPUs. But if it comes out Vice Lake CPUs, it's Microsoft. I have no confidence that they will put Tiger Lake CPUs at the end of the year, which should have better graphics. I have no confidence in that. But the actual specs look great on paper. The Thunderbolt 3, to me, is going to be the deal breaker. If it doesn't have Thunderbolt 3, I definitely won't get it because it's only got four cores. Now, have a nice like CPU and the Iris Plus graphics. If I connect an eGPU, I'll get renders faster than anything. But if I can't connect an eGPU to it, I'll have to wait and see. I guess, you know, four cores isn't as good as six or eight. But it does have a graphics card, so it should still have decent render times. But for me, you let me know down there in the comments. Is it the same for you? Do you need Thunderbolt 3? Don't know why Microsoft are allergic to it. It's just strange. It's like, why would you not put Thunderbolt 3? Now, will it be easily upgradable or whatever? I doubt it because everything's going to be behind the display, isn't it? Most of it. Actually, if they re-engineered it and put, you know, the SSD in the actual base, but they can't do that, can they? Because once you take the screen off, yeah, the main, yeah, no, I doubt it. Maybe a secondary SSD there. Anyway... It's looking promising, it's looking good. When can we expect it? We can expect it, I guess, end of March, April to, to back to school, that sort of window. If it's not dropping then, it'll definitely have to wait until October. And then if it drops in October, it better not have Ice Lake CPUs at that point. It better have Tiger Lake. Hopefully it's going to drop soon when they, uh, you know, announce the Neo and the Duo, the Microsoft Duo, the new phones and the sort of tablet thing. Hopefully they introduce the Surface Book three with those as well and then that'll be amazing can't wait to get one in the house oh and when it comes to the price this is friggin nuts right all right so say i want a um <laughs> a 13 inch so the 13 inch is going to be the least expensive now come on you want 16 gigs don't you you know eight's a bit light these days you can't get away with 16 gigs you do nothing but 16 gigs is you know i would prefer that hopefully the new ones have up to 32 gigs maybe even 64 if you're lucky all right so let's just go eight gigs just to see what the cheapest is so there you go um let's the 256 gig look at a the price there so 2199 australian that's a decent price for the surface book okay it's a, you know innovative device whatever it's got an i5 it's got enough power there looks like a good device for that but if you want to spec it up to what i would get like 16 gigs and yeah i want an i7 and i want a terabyte ssd 4499 what the fuck? are you serious that's like more expensive than a macbook pro like a 16 inch like with a 99 the prices are just insane so the prices have to go down but there is one saving grace for this because if you get the base model you can go with the i5 or i7 doesn't matter but you're going to get the iris graphics you know i wouldn't recommend these without the graphics i reckon you do need the discrete graphics so that's why i'll go for the i7 with the discrete graphics here but with the new ice lake cpus you could probably get away without the graphics 
if you don't need it. So yeah, that's an option here. So anyway, hopefully the pricing's not like this. I mean, come on, $4,500 for a Surface Book 13 inch. I mean, what the hell's a 15 inch cost? 16 gig, blah, 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 one terabyte. Why oh, four thousand nine hundred doesn't even cost that much more, really, does it? Yeah, that's a strange, strange price. Anyway, the specs look awesome. Let me know what you guys think. There, can't wait to have a look at one of these. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.